when you have self-awareness, it leads to self-control. You cannot control something you're not aware of. You cannot make a new decision based on something that you're not aware of. Yo, Elliot. Yo, Elliot. I've been really focusing on trying to get my confidence up. The no more Mr. Nice Guy thing. I just started reading the book over again and really just started accepting myself as I am. Being a man and being my true best self with no doubt or second thoughts. This seems to be a subject that's real hard to get in my head and to make click and make switch. Wondering if you can help, maybe a pep talk or something. I just wanna get over this thing so I can project it into my life. The very first thing I would do is fulfill your promise not to judge yourself, right? The, we really get stuck because what you resist persists. And if you keep judging yourself as, oh man, I'm too much of a nice guy, you're going to be stuck in that place, right? Um, you got to just allow yourself to be what you are right now with, with a vision of what you're becoming, right? And gratitude for that coming into your life. Number one, stop judging yourself, stop beating yourself up, allow yourself to truly be. Number two, in terms of you being a quote unquote nice guy, just notice yourself. This is so important. It's, it's really what I'm talking about here is self-awareness. Just notice yourself right down to the micro movements in your physiology when you're about to be a nice guy and take notes, right? You want to treat yourself like an objective observer, like a scientist, right? A scientist has no judgments. He's not judging the experiment at all. He's watching the experiment so he can make some rational conclusions. And I want you to treat yourself that way as well. Treat yourself like a scientific experiment, right? And there are gonna be certain circumstances that trigger the nice guy in you. I don't want you to think about why I've been a nice guy or what I should do instead of being a nice guy or how I could be a tough guy. I don't want you to think about any of that. I want you to notice what happens in those moments when you go nice guy mode. Right. Notice what kind of people trigger nice guy mode in you. Right. A lot of men, they struggle with authority. Right. And so they 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 go into nice guy mode when there's an authority around. Right. A lot of men struggle with intersexual dynamics in women. So they become a nice guy when women are around. Right. Some guys just struggle with in, in social situations and whoever they're around, they cannot be themselves. They go into nice guy mode. So, I, number one, I want you to notice the circumstance that causes the triggering of nice guy mode. Are you in nice guy mode when you're with your friends? Are you in nice guy mode when you're with your family, when you're with girls, when you're at work? Where are the situations that trigger nice guy mode? You might be in nice guy mode at work, but you might go, you might go to the supermarket later on and you realize nice guy mode is out the window. Where did he go, right? But I want you to be an observer. Notice, right? Notice when you're being a pandering blue pill bitch, right? Notice it. Hmm. These are the, without judgment, scientists, right? You can even take notes. Hmm, today, it, was, it happened at 347 when this customer walked in. Hmm, right? Now, that observation can't be based on your activity, right? So I'm taking a step back. Don't observe it based on your, your overt activity. Base it on the subtle movements in your body and your mind. Notice muscles that start to tense when you're about to go into nice guy mode, right? Notice, do I start to pull my belly in and does my breath get shallow? Do I clench my jaw? Do I shrug my shoulders? Do I pull my feet up into an arch in my shoes? Does my right eye begin to tense and twitch? Do my fist begin to ball up? Do I begin breathing from my throat and from my neck rather than my belly? Does my neck feel tense, right? Do my legs feel stiff? Do I lose feelings from my waist down, right? Be an observer of how the energy is moving in your body in those instances, not for judgment, just to notice. Because when you have self, when you have self-awareness, it leads to self-control. You cannot control something you're not aware of. 
You cannot make a new decision based on something that you're not aware of. You have to notice your primal reaction, very subtle subconscious primal reactions to certain circumstances so that you can nip it in the bud. The way you speak who, and, the, and the way you present yourself all happens through the body. All self-expression happens through the body, whether you're talking or whatever, right? You're express this is our expressive mechanism. We express ourselves through our body. Even if you're writing, right? You're doing this, right? I used to notice how I was tense when I was writing emails back when I used to do copywriting, right? I learned that I had to relax my shoulders and I had to breathe while I was writing because I was so anxious. Not anxious. I'm just like a beast. So I'm like trying to beat up the keys and trying to get the message in there. And I had to stop. I had to realize, well, what the hell am I doing? I'm stressing myself out. Right? And I'm doing bad work because I'm tense. So all self-expression happens through the body, and that means, this is a beautiful thing because it allows us to be rational. That means it's not about what you're thinking, right? A lot of times we're gonna approach these problems, right? Like get my confidence up means like I need a pep talk or I need to talk to myself a little differently. That's all valid, that's all true, but I'm giving you a hack. Go right to your body. How's my body responding and how am I breathing? When you can free the tension up in your body, breathe deep, you express yourself with more grace. And when you express yourself with more grace, you're expressing yourself with more authenticity, more realness. You can't be fake when you just relax, when you're natural, when you breathe in. It's hard to be fake when you're relaxed. Do you ever notice that, right? Like, you know, like you could be fake with strangers, but then when you're at home, you're so real because you relax at home. This is why people will argue and fight with, their, with the people in their house more than they will with strangers, right? I think this is the strangest freaking thing. And I, I pointed it out to one of my kids the other day. I was like, you come in here and you arguing with your sister, fighting with your sister, being a big old badass, but when you were at camp the other day, I saw that kid picking on you and you didn't say nothing. Why are you such a tough guy over here, but over there, you don't say nothing, right? I was trying to explain it to one of my children. And it kind of like, uh, uh, kind of like, Flip the switch, like, what? Yeah, like, because she was saying, like, oh, I can't be mean. I don't want to be mean. I want to be, but you mean mean right now because you relaxed and you take the relax. When you relaxed, you take things for granted, but at the same time, you being real. You got to be relaxed to be real. Confidence, bro. Con the word confidence means with faith, right? To act with faith. F Fidence, fidence, right? Remember the con, con works with, con means with, right? Oros con pollo. Fidence comes from fidelity. Fidelity is what's, it comes from faith. Fidelity, right? Like if you're going to confide in somebody, right? Means you have faith in them. To confide in someone is to speak to them about things that you are maybe, you know, you, you have to have trust with that person in order to speak with them, right? Confidence and confide come from the same root, Right? And the, and, the, and, the, and the fidelity part has everything to do with faith and, and trust. It's trust. It's trust and faith. And so if you're trying to get your trust, your confidence up, it's about having trust and faith. Confidence has everything to do with trust and faith. You have to trust yourself in the moment and have faith that it's all going to work out. If you don't trust yourself, you're going to be fake. If you don't trust yourself, you're going to put on. You're going to be something you're not. You got to trust yourself that you are right. You got to trust yourself in your ability to respond in that moment. That comes with practice. When I was making YouTube videos like constantly back in like the early 2000, 2013, 14, 15, right? I got really good at it because I was practicing it and my confidence just oozed through the screen. But then I took a long break and I came back and, and it was like herky jerky. It was herky jerky. If you watch some of my videos, maybe from like 2017, 18, right? It's like, Elliot is like not all there. Why? My confidence was shot. I lost my confidence because I wasn't practicing it, right? I lost trust in myself. I was second guessing myself. I was overthinking my answers. I was preparing too much. That's not what a confident man does. A confident man will sit here, read this question and whatever comes out is what it is. And that's the same thing the same difference between being a nice guy and a real guy. 
a nice guy. And I started turning into a nice guy. And that's part of the reason why I stopped making YouTube videos because I was trying to give people answers they want. Now I just say what comes to my chest, right? Confidence, right? I got confidence. So you got to practice confidence. When I start, when I came back making YouTube videos, it was because I spent so much time talking to you guys, my kings in this program that got my, got my verbal juices going, got my confidence up so that now I make these videos and I'm just flowing, bro, right? That's practice. That's, you got to practice confidence. Practice. You got to practice it. So practice being responsive in the moment, right? And the way you become very responsive in this moment is by being relaxed. And the way you become relaxed in the moment is by paying attention to where you're tense. And the way you become attention, you pay attention to where you're tense is by stopping and noticing, being self-aware. And that's the key, dude. Done. Yo, it's your bro, Elliot. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, you ought to know that it was a clip from one of my most recent King Transformation classes with my students, where among other things, we get together about four or five hours a week and we speak on things as it relates to becoming kings in our lives and fitness, business, and with women. If that sounds like you and you wanna join a like-minded group of men who are growing stronger every day, in every way in this degenerate age, then it's real simple. Just follow me on Instagram, and then DM me the word King, K-I-N-G, and then me and my team will get back to the details to see if you qualify. I really hope to see you at the next meeting. Done.